I am taking this month off, and while I'm away, some other folks are taking over my channel. We start this week with a couple of astronomy and physics majors who, along with Professor Chris Impey and their team at the University of Arizona, make a channel called Active Galactic Videos. Now, the video they've sent is a little rough around the edges in places, but the idea is so good that I am genuinely annoyed that I couldn't go out and film this myself. So, Jenny, Melissa, over to you. Hi, I'm Jenny. And I'm Melissa. And we're here underneath the University of Arizona's football stadium in the Richard F. Karras Mirror Lab. Behind me is the world's largest spinning furnace filled with 38,000 pounds of molten glass. Over the next couple of months, the glass will slowly cool and start to form a mirror, one of seven that will be part of the Giant Magellan Telescope. Once completed, the GMT will be the largest telescope in the world. The GMT is being built in Chile at the Las Campanas Observatory in the Atacama Desert, and it's scheduled to see first light in 2022. This massive telescope will have 10 times the resolution of the Hubble Space Telescope and more than seven times the light gathering power of the largest telescopes today. The GMT is made of seven eight and a half meter mirrors for a total diameter of 25 meters, and it will be used to study galaxies, stars, and exoplanets. The GMT-5, which is the mirror being cast right now, is actually the 20th mirror made at this facility. Other mirrors have been made for other telescopes, like the MMT, the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope, the Twin Magellan Telescopes, and the Large Binocular Telescope. It was built under the stadium to take advantage of the large columns, which act as load-bearing structures for all the heavy equipment needed. It's also nice and quiet when there aren't football games going on. It's a great way to make football benefit both the university and science. To start off, we need 38,540 pounds of glass. Sand is shipped from all over the world and brought to Japan to the Ohara Glass Factory. They're the only factory in the world that can make the E6 low expansion glass that's needed for the GMT mirrors. The glass is made in 2,000 pound batches made exclusively for the University of Arizona. It takes around two and a half years to make enough glass for a single mirror. So, you know, plan ahead. The glass is then shipped here to Tucson. Once the mirror lab gets it, they have to clean it, inspect it, and weigh it. If there are any stresses or imperfections in the glass, then the piece is rejected and made into paperweights. Each individual piece of glass is placed carefully into the mold and inside the oven. The 40-foot diameter oven is then gradually heated to a temperature of 1,350 degrees Fahrenheit over the course of a week. There are cameras in the oven to monitor the process, but once it begins, there's no turning back. At this point, the massive oven is filled with 19 tons of glass and starts to spin five revolutions per minute. Once the oven reaches 2,129 degrees Fahrenheit, or 1,165 degrees Celsius, the consistency of the glass is about the same as honey and starts to flow into the mold. It might make sense why we need an oven to melt the glass, but you might be wondering, why does it spin? It spins to make the shape we need for a mirror, a parabola. Modern telescopes use parabolic mirrors to collect and concentrate light. They use the parabolic shape to get the light into a central focus point. And the bigger the mirror, the more light is collected. But what does this have to do with spinning besides making us dizzy? Well, let's take a look. So it turns out that spinning a liquid actually causes it to automatically become this parabolic shape. So whenever you spin the glass, it creates the perfect shape needed for a mirror. This is a massive improvement over how mirrors used to be made, and it grinds years off the process. The mirror spends three months cooling and annealing in the oven. So now it's the right shape, but it isn't quite done yet. When light hits the mirror, the surface has to be smoother than a fraction of the wavelength of light, otherwise the image is distorted. In order to get it this smooth, the mirror lab spends two years polishing the glass. It has to be smooth to the point where no imperfection on the surface is larger than a virus. After all that, after melting the glass in this giant oven and polishing it for two years, all you have is a huge, really smooth piece of glass. So the mirror lab actually doesn't make any mirrors. The final step in turning this giant piece of glass into a mirror is actually done on site at the observatory. A layer of aluminum about 100 nanometers thick is deposited onto the surface. To cover a mirror of this size, it actually only takes a soda can's worth of metal. Unlike your mirrors at home, the reflective coating is only on the front surface, so it's very delicate and needs to be re-illuminized every so many years. Thank you to everyone here at the Richard F. Karras Mirror Lab and the Stewart Observatory. Tours are open to the public every day of the week. 
Go subscribe to Active Galactic videos for more like that. I would recommend starting with the video where they get to walk on the dish of a telescope. And yes, I am extremely envious that they got to do that. Next week, a language video that you are probably going to need subtitles for.